All right, so Shauna, hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good, I'm, I'm psyched for this uh, conversation. I have to say for everyone who will be watching this that um, you are many things, but you're like the best listener that I've ever met. So I'm very <laughs> intimidated to be doing an interview with you because I have to listen. It's not always my strongest suit, so I'm gonna do my best here. But oh, thank um, you. Today, we're gonna to be talking about sales and marketing alignment, which I think every marketer, we heard of like a collective groan across the universe, because I know this is a challenge for people, but that's why I'm so excited to have this conversation with you. Um, before we get started, just for everyone's benefit, could you just introduce yourself, your company, who you are, what your business does? Absolutely, yeah. So Shauna Mace, um, Shauna Mace Consulting. So I am a growth consultant. I focus on working with a lot of REAs, it's really small business businesses, business owners in financial services. Um, and what I do is I really help them get very intentional about, about growth. So a, a great outcome is you wake up in the morning and you know what you need to do today to make progress towards your goals. And what I found more recently, uh, which is an interesting kind of um, uh, byproduct, is that I've noticed that in helping, helping advisors and business owners with their marketing and their sales strategy and tactics is that they actually become a lot more engaged and excited about their business, a lot more confident and hopeful. Um, so it not just helping them grow their business, but also helping them re-engage in their business. Hmm. It's great. I, I, I love it. And I know you do amazing work. Um, so, so as mentioned, we're going to talk about something that probably takes you more back to like your corporate days, right? It's sort of how this tension between marketing and sales always exists, but how can they sort of come closer together and obviously drive results? Can you take us, before we get into the topic, can you just take us a little bit back into your history and why sort of you're qualified to talk about this, this topic in your mind? Sure, yeah, hope I'm qualified. So <laughs> I've been, I've been in, in the financial service industry for 15 years. Um, I spent time at an REA, but where I really, where I think this is really relevant uh, with my time at an asset manager, I started there in marketing and I, I joined that firm because I really wanted to expand and grow my marketing skills. I wanted to be around people who were much smarter and more experienced than I was. And so I started in marketing and about nine months in, they decided to diversify the business. So they actually were really focused on, on selling their products to independent broker dealers. And they, they you know, like many firms, saw the opportunity in the REA channel and they thought, you know, we need to go after that. And this was, I mean, this was probably seven years ago now. And at the time, I, having worked at an REA for seven years prior, I had like the most experience in that channel. Um, so I was just like, had this incredible opportunity being pretty, you know, new and pretty junior in marketing. I was asked to be part of this team. There's three of us, a senior, a real senior executive, a woman from national accounts, from sales, and then myself in marketing to start to build out the business. So I actually had this amazing chance to really play many, wear many hats and play different roles. So I was the marketer, like I was helping build the strategy. And I was also, because they didn't have a sales team yet, I was also like attending conferences and actually had to really like live in the salespeople's shoes and, and function. I, I mean, at that point I wasn't licensed, so I wasn't selling, but I was really having to try to fill that gap in, in as they were hiring salespeople. And so that, I mean, that just gave me such an unbelievable education in sales, in um, the sales process, in what they needed to do, their challenges, the conversations. It made me a much better marketer. And it really, um, it really like was a, a great learning experience in how to bridge and partner with marketing and sales. And ultimately I had the opportunity to work in sales. So I went from this marketing role, I ended up um, managing the internal sales desk for the RA channel, which was not ever something I expected to do. It was an amazing experience. I learned a lot about coaching and, and like sales techniques and skill. Um, and ended up eventually running the sales strategy and analytics team, which is really sales operations. So it was a lot around strategy, but we also served as a bridge between marketing and sales. So partnering with both groups to get a lot of the like business strategy and tactics executed and mm -hmm. measured. So it was, um, yeah, I think the, the RA, building out the RA channel at, at the firm I was at, at FS Investments was just like, such a unique experience. And that's really what kind of gave me the viewpoint 
I, or perspective I have in both both worlds. Yeah, I I love that story because it's so funny. Like I've had to sell throughout my career, and ever since I've gone through the experience of selling, I've said oftentimes like every marketer should have to sell something one day totally. because it just links things up. It's not like marketing theory. It's like how marketing really supports sales. So it's great that you've sort of been in those shoes because I think it gives you a really unique um, perspective. So so thanks for that. Um, I, I am curious, this wasn't one of our, our questions, so hopefully it doesn't take you by surprise, but but that act of like selling or managing a sales test, is, it, is there anything that, you know, that made you appreciate about sales that you didn't necessarily have noticed before when you were just a marketer, so to speak? Oh my God, yes. Like I, sales is hard. I mean, I think putting, you know what the hard part is, is you have to be, you have to know a lot. You have to go into conversations not knowing 100%. You're cr incredibly vulnerable, like over and over and over again. Um, and I think the, I think the other thing is just you're measured so like you're you are very much um, held to a certain standard that is based on your results. It's mm -hmm. very you know you're rewarded if you do well, but it's very clear when you're not doing well. And to be measured every single day, um, especially internal salespeople, they tend to be measured based on activity and number of calls outbounds and sales presentations and very. It's very metrics based and to have to show up at work every single day and no matter what's going on in your life, you're going to be measured. <laughs> like that's hard. And um, yeah, so I, I have a huge appreciation and respect for people who do that work. And it is certainly an art and a skill and it takes time to get, you know, to get to the high level and be really successful. So yeah, absolutely. It was very right. deep level of respect for people to doing that every single day. You're right. You're right. Um, so, so, so jumping into our, our topic, you know, there's this sort of age old thing where marketing sort of at sales throat, sales is at marketing throat. And an anecdote for me is I remember traveling with a wholesaler, you know, from office to office, just sort of seeing what a wholesaler did in our business. And like he kept on as a joke to the financial advisor we were speaking with, kept on blaming things on marketing. He was like, that's all marketing's fault, by the way. <laughs> and it sort of brought to light, like, there's always just this tension between sales and marketing. So just like a provocative question to start, why does sales dislike marketing? Why does marketing dislike sales? Like, why is there a historical disconnect between these two groups? Yeah, it's, it's a great question and certainly exists, that tension. Um, so I love the question. And I was thinking about, as I was prepping for this conversation, thinking about that, like, what is the great analogy? Like, how, how can we make it relatable? And I think the thing that I, I came up with is really, it's like, you know, do you have a sibling? Yes. I do. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So marketing and sales are like being in the same family and being, but they're siblings. Like you need each other to survive. You need to love each other because you're like inherently part of the same family. But it doesn't mean you like each other all the time. And I think it's. And I think the other thing is like there's this dynamic between like there's always like gender or not gender roles, but um like firstborn versus secondborn or the middle child. And and I almost view sales as like the second or the last, the youngest, and marketing is like the firstborn, like marketing can do no wrong. They're very smart. They're very polite. They're very, like they follow the rules. And then right. sales is like the wild child who like doesn't listen and just creates messes. And like, that's the, I think the roles right or wrong. Those are some of the roles. Like there are these distinct roles that each, you know, the different groups play. Um, but at the end of the day, they need each other. You know, they really do need each other. In, in, there's so many, um, so much they can do when they're, they collaborate and they're working together and it's just unbelievable. And when they're not, it's like, can be really hard and really messy. Um, but I do think there's this dynamic and I think I almost see it as like a sibling dynamic between the two. And I think that is, you know, that's inherently you, you have to kind of like work through those things. And, you know, often when we're kids, we maybe butt heads with our siblings. And as you get older, you're like, you really appreciate them. And I think if we can kind of like skip some of the butting the heads, you know, and, and, and there's some there's some real opportunity to work together, but it's very, I think the dynamic is a very sibling, similar to a sibling dynamic. I think the other thing that makes it challenging is, you know, marketing tends to be at the end of processes in that they are executing on, on content and material. And, and I think they can often be viewed as an obstacle for getting yeah. things done. And I think that that, and I almost think about it like the older child who's following the rules. Well, it's like, well, we didn't do all X, Y, and Z, so we can't know. Like, they're 
I think that can be, um, that maybe is why sometimes they're blamed and you know they do have some power there and that they can control a situation. Um, at the same time, they can be have to be pushed and really out of their comfort zone or out of their, you know, their process and that's uncomfortable too. So there's definitely this um, interplay and dynamic, they need each other, but they like don't understand each other. And I think that can really cause some, some issues for sure. And some amazing things too. If they can get it, yeah, get it right. Getting the therapy territory, but it's sort of like, well, why does he get to do that? But I don't get to do that. It's sort of measurement is a great example that you brought up where, you know, sales is getting measured on like these really hard metrics, but like, yeah. is the same you're there for marketing and marketing's measuring clicks. Is that as important as like the million dollars I generate? You know, I mean, there's, there's real interplay between those. So I love that analogy. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I can imagine oh. if, if marketing was being, you know, and sometimes marketing is measured in that sort of um, intensity or that sort of like quantitative metrics. But yeah, I think that that's a really good point. Like it's hard. Yeah, there being there's different rules. Like they're, they're being held to different standards sometimes, um, right or wrong. And I think that can definitely cause some, yeah. some that's great. frustration. Great so does, does one sibling dislike the other more? Have you seen like, does marketing dislike sales more? Does sales dislike, I know it's a strong word, but like, is there one group that's pointing the finger at the other more and, and why? Or is it like, nah, it's sort of equal in your mind? Oh man, um, I think it depends probably on the organization, of course. But I would say in my experience, and this is just my experience, I would say that marketing misunderstands sales more. Mm. Um, I would say that marketing gets frustrated with being pushed. It's almost like being bullied, maybe is how they feel. Um, yeah. Not that whether that's true or not, but it's almost like, you know, I, I was the older sibling, I have, a, I have a younger sister and I would put up with it, but I would get, I get really frustrated, you know? And there's, there's moments when you're like, okay, it's too much. And I think they have to, I think marketing does have to put up with a, a lot. Um, and I think that they're not always valued in the same way. People don't always understand the value. And that can be really frustrating to be yeah. working really hard and not feel like appreciated or valued or understood like how much effort this takes. Yeah. Um, so I would say if I had to pick, and I think it varies, but if I had to pick, I would say marketing probably can get more frustrated with sales. Sales can kind of go off and do their thing. They're kind of like, yeah. whatever. We can blame marketing. Marketing yeah. can't blame sales, really. Yeah. What, what do you think? With that. I mean, I, I liked where you started. You said marketing misunderstands sales um, because I think that's where it starts. Like I, I've always been a believer. I mean, sales, it is such a critical for someone who like, you know, functions in the world of insights and what's really happening, what really matters with a product or a service. I mean, what you see happen in the sale, like sales sees it, you know, they're seeing the challenges, they're seeing the barriers and often they're very, very crystal clear. So I think that word, you know, misunderstood was a really good and operative one because I think that's where that disconnect happens. And I, I think, I think you agree with this based on what you said, like, I think marketing needs to appreciate that of what sales is really seeing. And obviously sales needs to appreciate marketing's view on how to solve it, but um it does start with a sale. Like that is the end objective, whether marketers like it or not, you know? If right. You yeah. No, I totally agree. Um, yeah, it, it's funny, you know, when people group, different groups, whether it was marketing or other groups who get frustrated with sales, it's kind of like, we got to remember, like they're helping keep the lights on here, you know? And we're all, we're and really at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. We're all, when you're working in an organization who's selling, if that's part of your goals, like you're in sales. You may not be in frontline sales and direct sales, but you're in sales. And in whether you're in marketing or in product development or legal or whatever, like that's the goal. If that's the goal, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that's a really good, that's a good point to remember. What's, what's the detriment of these two groups not working well together? And what's the value if they can really be like aligned and in lockstep together in your mind? Yeah, I think, well, I mean, the detriment is just a, a lot of wasted resources, like a lot of wasted resources um, disappointing results, frustration, um, lack of creativity. Like, it's just like, like a bad family dynamic, you know, like when you're in a bad relationship, it doesn't feel good. Nothing good comes out of it. You're net negative. Like whether it's in the business or personal relationships, like it does, it's just not productive. It's dysfunctional. And I think when it works really well, I mean, that literally it's like one plus one equals three, you can do unbelievable things. And, and 
you, you, you inherently, you need each other. Um, and so I think there's definitely, I think we're going to talk about this. We'll definitely talk about this, but like there's things you can do to get there um, that, and there's things that no matter what role you're in, whether you're the leader, whether you're the manager, whether you're the, you know, one of the, the teammates, you're part of the team, the marketing team or the sales team, like there's things we can all, we all should be doing to help yeah. really like support this relationship and, and um, build the relationship that you need as far as like this like idea of a family or a team. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, when there's, when you're working on the same page, I mean, marketing is sales inherently. It's, mm -hmm. it's just what it is. And mm -hmm. so if you can be they're like, in my mind, like early, early front tend to be like paving the way for sales. They make it easier um, mm -hmm. and helping support the sale. If they're, if they're hel really helping and being supportive, it's unbelievable what they can do, help open doors and really support the sales conversation and sales is the feedback loop. I think you mentioned that, like, you know, that is really yeah. important information mm -hmm. to help marketing succeed. So it's very close. There's really like this um, inherent dynamic and connection they have and they need each other. Um, right. It's, it's so funny. Again, just going back to one of those wholesale visits I took years ago, I remember having the chance to like ask a financial advisor, do you read market commentary content that's sent to you. And he pointed to a pile of like booklets from all the asset managers and said, I get about, you know, 20 of these a month and I read none of them. And I was like, that's a great insight right there. But that's yeah. what sales is being like, that is such an important insight. How do you differentiate? How do you, you know, actually reach a group and you just don't feel it or see it unless you're like, in. so that feedback loop is huge. It couldn't yeah. agree more there. So, so let's get to your point to some solutions. How, how do you bridge the gap here? How, how do these groups come closer together and sort of solve this critical issue in your mind? Well, I think there's a few, a few key ways. So one for leaders, so people who are um, managing these teams, I guess well, even before that, one, I think how like the reporting structure is incredibly important. If marketing and sales is living in two separate um, silos, that's not good. You're not supporting their ability to, to coexist. I think it's really helpful when they are, you know, if they're, they're in the same side of the business, you know, they are, or there is a way for them to be really like in their mind, be on the same team. That's really important. So just how you structure sales and marketing in the organization. Mm -hmm. And then for the people who are leading um, the organization and leading these groups, it is incredibly important for them, just like a parent, a good, you know, a good parent, like to, uh, to help validate the, va like their value and to make sure and protect the space that they like, they each have value, recognize it, help to um, like my, I have two kids, like I, I think I mentioned, and they're very different. And I want them to, I want them to feel proud about why they're different. Like just because they're different, it doesn't mean there's a like better and a worse, they're just different. And we need both of them and who they are. And that's mm -hmm. important as a leader. Um, and to make sure that they're, they always have a seat at the table. Maybe mm -hmm. not everyone in marketing or everyone in sales, but like there is representation from both groups mm -hmm. at the very beginning of conversations, not in the middle or the end. I think, mm -hmm. again, as leaders, it's important to really, really um, almost treat, you know, it's like you're the parent. You, you need to make everyone feel good and special, hear the voice, respect, and, and make sure that they are, understand they're in this together. They're part of a family. They're part of a team. Um, and then I think the other thing leaders can do is they can create opportunities for there to be this collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so just like when I had this experience where I was kind of put in, I was in marketing, but I was really put in a uh, opportunity to do some sales, to be interacting with sales in a very intimate way, like create these opportunities for these cross-functional teams. Mm -hmm. And that could be like some of the stuff we did at FS that I thought was really successful was beta testing or um, doing uh, like we're early, early in building out a process or a technology or a campaign messaging. We made sure we had, it was a small, tended to be a smaller team. Um, so we didn't have too many cooks in the kitchen, but we had it, people from different departments, from mm -hmm. different areas of the business to make sure that there was a collaboration early, early on mm -hmm. and they could learn from each other. And it, it, it helped get different voices and perspectives that also help build relationships. So, you know, people who may be sitting in marketing 
and may never really interact with salespeople are now interacting with salespeople. They're building relationships and rapport. And so, you know, they have, they're building trust. And so when they succeed in this, this um, project, they now have a relationship. They're proud of what they did. They know each other. And so when something else comes up, they, there's an open line of communication. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing, so I'm, I'm giving you a lot here. The last thing is, um, I just think people need to take it upon themselves, regardless of their role and level to like reach out, ask for help, like be interested and curious what's happening across Mm. other parts of the business. Mm. Um, You know, an example being if when you're writing, I remember at different points, I would be creating content for email, email content. And I would oftentimes call a couple of salespeople that I knew and trusted and run it by them and say, you know, what do you think? Is this messaging going to work? Are they, is this at all relevant? And I would really and truly listen to their feedback. You know, I asked for help. And I think that that, or even like listening to sales calls, you know, if you can listen to recorded sales calls, like what are they, what are advisors actually talking about and asking? What do they actually want to know? What are their, their objections? Um, so really being curious and taking it upon yourself to learn and put yourself in the other side shoes and learn about um, what's really going on, I think can be really, really powerful. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I, I think three, you know, crystal clear things. One is sort of breaking down the silos about the leadership level and sort of the structural um, level. You know, two is sort of creating, I think you said almost cross-functional pods, right? Like where these mm-hmm. groups are literally sitting at the same table and side note, like you could have product involved in those discussions too. I mean, Absolutely. sales is great feedback on product. So that's all other side. And then the other is just like sort of this personal responsibility to find ways to collaborate and engage. And I think that's a mentality shift too. Like I always sort of said, my customer is the advisor, but like also like I serve sales. Like I live to Absolutely. serve sales. And it's almost that servant mentality that's like a form of leadership in that way. So um, I, I really like that, I have to say. Yeah, no, I think that's right. You're totally right. Like you're in marketing and I always had that mentality too. My like ultimate, the end user is the, you know, the end user, but like my number one client was the salespeople. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. I was my client. You live to serve them, you know, yeah. and, and appreciate how hard they work. Jeez. So um, I, also, I also would just want to emphasize like just a couple ideas because I can't help myself. I've always advocated for this, but no one ever listens. Like, Marketing and sales don't need to sit on two different sides of the building. Oh, like it's totally. It's together. Yeah. What I love about that, what it makes Chris clear is like marketing can't say sales is doing it again because sales can literally hear you and sales can't say, well, these marketing guys are idiots because like they're sitting together. So that's just like a very small thing. And then your leadership point is huge because that trickles down. Like I've made leadership mistakes in the past where I've like fired off at another department. Like account management doesn't know what they're doing. Not in my current company in the past. And um, it, it's bad. Like all of a sudden, everyone's backbiting. So like you have to set a little style at the leadership level for how to approach this. I yeah. Really like it, so. yeah, I like the idea of being a parent. Like if you're a parent, are you going to single out one of your kids? No, I mean, hopefully not. At least you're going to try, try not to. Um, yeah, I think it's like that kind of like makes, keeps it simple. But no, I, yeah. so there was one year when I was at FS that we ended up, because space was tight and we we're, they're moving people around, we ended up sitting on this in the same office space as sales. It was like, we we're all on top of each other. It was small. It was the, I mean, anyone you asked, the most fun, productive, such great team building year. It was, it was great. It really was. I mean, the office space was nothing to write home about, but it was just, we, we were, we were a team. Yeah. We, we heard the calls. We, we made really, we, you know, we had relationships. We actually hung out with them. Like, like we, it, we were a true team and it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So hint, hint, just to fix this guy is just sit together. It's not that hard. Right? Sit together, <laughs> hang out, get to know each other. Sit some time together, you'll get to know one another. It could help, just saying. Um, so, so, so that's great. I'm, I'm curious, um, and you, you already relate a little bit on the FS side, so maybe we covered this, but, but is there a story you could point to, like either at like an individual level, something that worked really well, well or at a macro level of, of just like, hey, here's an example that I've seen that just like, where marketing and sales did work well together and here was the value of it and how it happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a really good example. Um, We were, so we were, FS was launching into the wirehouse channel. Um, So we were 
on our first wirehouse platform, I won't name the name of the wirehouse, but it was a great opportunity. And we, you know, pretty much didn't have any relationships. Like the sales team members, again, didn't have relationships in wirehouses. It was typically independent broker dealers and REAs where they had relationships. Um, it was our first time on, on a, the platform. So we didn't have name recognition mm -hmm. and we didn't have a huge budget but we needed to make this work. We needed to raise assets. And so what we did is we pretty much laid out, we had, a, again, a small group of people, um, mm -hmm. different, different levels and everything from marketing and sales. And we kind of laid out the obstacles, like, okay, here are the goals, here are the obstacles, like, what are we gonna do? And we truly, we really collaborated on a campaign and we're very intentional about like recognizing we need marketing to um, cut through the noise to get in front of advisors, to start to create name recognition. And we developed this uh, campaign. We ended up using digital advertising, very, very targeted digital, digital advertising, um, which was kind of an experiment at that time. And we also set the expectation that like, we're gonna try this and it might fail. We don't know, we've never done this before. And, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna be, we're gonna give it a, the best effort. We're gonna be aligned. We ended up doing, um, we rolled out to the sales team, the plan and the training. And we had, in my team, I was running the sales strategy and analytics team. So we were very, we were like actually organizing data of advisors and we're coordinating with marketing and sales on waves of like, who are we targeting? And we would start with marketing and then sales would follow up with calls. So like really, really aligned effort. And we ended up really like having unbelievable results. I mean, we raised more assets. The product we had was a great product, but we ended up raising more assets. I think we were the largest um, capital raise on that platform for a new, a new partner, which is amazing. And it, it definitely, there was a large part of that that had to do with just the intentionality around our approach. And it was both marketing and it was sales. It was incredibly targeted, incredibly mm -hmm. intentional. Um, very coordinated and we would we would do training calls like almost weekly where we'd be giving updates as to what's going on what was coming from marketing and so this what the sales what sales was saying and marketing were saying were aligned mm -hmm. and it just you know I think it felt very consistent and coordinated and um, it, it worked really really well. I love that story because it, it's really strategy in a nutshell what it started off with with was a shared joint objective right like both groups were focused on one thing that they could, you know, both contribute to, and they were going to work to get, like, force this collaboration, right? And I love how focused it was, too. It's like, mm -hmm. we're going after wires. We're not going after the world. Like, you could get it down to a deducible equation. So right. it's a great story for many reasons, I have to say. Yeah, they are very focused, very distinct group of audience. Like, right. goal was very clear. Like, we just were like, okay, with, with what we have, what can we do with this? Yeah, and let's let's sit together and figure it out. Work together yep. together. So I, I, I love that. Do you think there's a nuance? You know, we both come out of the asset management world. We both specialize in the financial sector. Is there any nuance to like how marketing and sales work together in that regard? And that like because of the sector we're in, is there any just nuance to just what that world is like in, in financial services in particular in your mind? Yeah, I think. Well, I mean, I think one of the inherent challenges is gonna always be some of the regulatory stuff, uh, especially mm, for yeah. marketing. You know, it's yeah. easy to say like, oh, well, we can't because X, Y, and Z. Like some things which are easy in other industries are really, can be very difficult. Um, so example being like very timely content. You know, it's, you have to create a buy-in from your compliance team that they're willing to like review or that whatever the content is, you're able to get it out quickly. Um, so yeah, there, I think there's, I think reg regulatory stuff can be a challenge for sure in financial mm -hmm. services. Um, and I think, you know, I think, I don't know if this is specific to financial services, but I think in general, sometimes, um, just a misunderstanding of like, like not, not understanding like some of the techniques, like, mm -hmm. you know, I'm in this world, I don't, I don't understand digital marketing or I don't understand branding and like that can be a little bit like it's not valuable well it is and I think that that's again I don't know if that's specific to financial services but I do think that as you get as you partner and you are more doing more kind of sophisticated things marketing yeah. and sales things um, yeah. it can be easy to to 
not be on board because you don't understand. And so I think that's where there's trust is really important. Yeah. For sales to say like, well, what are they doing over there? It's not helping when no, it's, it's about, you know, trying to create a halo and some air cover and warm the door so that you have more access. Um, you know, so, so sales might not always sort of acknowledge or appreciate that some of the higher level stuff. So to speak. Yeah. So. And maybe feel a fear of failure too. Like, you know, even whether it's sales or sales management, even like, well, I'm a little bit of self-preservation. Like, I don't want things to not go well. Well, the yeah. only way you evolve is if you try things and sometimes things are going to fail. <laughs> like nothing ever is perfect. So yeah. I think that I that in finance, you know, it's so competitive and there is this kind of like a little bit of, I'm going to say ego, it can happen. Like this idea, like, well, what if this doesn't work? Well, then great, we won't do it again. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. like kind of getting over that fear of fair, failure. How do organizations know that, you know, okay, sales and marketing are working well together? Like, like, is there something they can just look for to say, yeah, we're doing this right or we're doing this wrong in your mind? So I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think one we talked about, which is are sales and marketing like hanging out together? You know, literally, are they having conversations? Do they know each other? I mean, that's not a hard metric. That's a qualitative metric, but um, I think that's really, that's like one. And then two, um, I would say I would be looking at the, the, their ability to evolve and improve outcomes. Hmm. If they're, if they are like working together, they're going to get better open rates, click rate, like they're going to be improving the marketing outcomes as well as pipeline, you know, engagement, like getting through to advisors, um, hmm. sales, like they are going, it's going to be, you're, you're going to be improving where you are in over time if you're actually collaborating and working together. So it's sort of this virtuous cycle, right? So it's helping to improve marketing, it's helping to improve sales. It all comes from that feedback loop. And I do think it also comes back to something you said earlier. It's like leadership can control this, right? Like yeah. create a nature of the two groups coming together, like show, don't tell people to do this. And it can sort of just create, like, it's a cultural thing in many ways. And, and so I like that controllable at the, at the leadership level. So um, j just one final question for you. If there's one thing, I think we went through a bunch of things. Like if there's one thing you would say, Hey, if you're a marketer or a salesperson listening to this or a leader, look at, listen to this, here's one thing that I would recommend doing in 2021 to help to like start to bridge the gap. What, what would your recommendation be? Yeah. So one thing would definitely be to be to find common ground to collaborate mm -hmm. together. Um, there's this awesome quote from Henry Ford, um, coming together is a beginning key keeping together is progress and working together is success. And I hmm. think you start with just, just coming together, finding opportunities. If you're a leader, finding opportunities to, you know, create these pods, these cross-functional teams. Um, it could be small things. It could be working on a specific campaign or even certain messaging or emails, what, fun messaging, whatever it is, but creating space for collaboration that is very intentional, um, I think is a really, important thing that companies can start start to do i love, I love that it's great yeah and, and and i just want to say like how important this is from my view because you know we do you know big sort of branding and, and marketing campaigns but the most critical touch point for a marketer is your salespeople, right like what are mm -hmm. they saying in the room i mean that sticks with people that's human to human contact is it scalable no but is it impactful Yes. So to your point, like if you can work together, if sales can be pushing the content or the message that marketing has, you know, done the research to say, this is what resonates, that's gold. But it all starts with like finding this way to collaborate. So as usual, branding, it's a lot, a lot more than just, you know, advertising or color palette. It's about, you know, how do you really impact like these deep inner level processes? And this is one of the most impactful ways you can do that is like figuring out a way to work with sales so that you're all working together. I love that. Right. Genre. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so just finally for folks who want to get in touch for your br brilliant consulting and sort of helping them sort of grow, or even, you know, for a corporation that says like, oh, Shauna can help us sort of bring marketing and sales closer together. How, how do folks find you? How do they get in touch with you? So I definitely start with my website. It's my name. So shaunamace.com. Um, that's a great place to start. And also I'm on LinkedIn. I try to share a lot of ideas and insights and content there as well. So please uh, connect with me or reach out on LinkedIn. I would, I would love to connect. Um, but yeah, website and LinkedIn are the be best places to find me. Great. Shauna, 
Happy New Year. I'm sure people will be seeing this in 2021. I'm sure it's going to be a totally different year than we've had. Oh, I'm sure. COVID's just going to be gone. It's all new, you know, so we'll see. Uh, but thank crossed. you so much. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, love the insights. Great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This was fun. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.